intro for these things, but um, why don't you introduce yourself? Give us a little bit. Let's get to know you as a small business owner. Hey, my name is Casey, Casey Chung. I'm a CPA, I'm a career coach and life coach, and really excited to be talking here um, to you to share more about my journey toward entrepreneurship, my journey as a professional accountant as well, and honestly, to share some of the struggles and the challenges of what it is to go through the motions of moving from a corporate environment into having a side hustle and eventually turning that into my full-time job. That's awesome. Um, it sounds like you went through, you know, like a few stages in your career and business development. Can you walk us through the journey of how you got towards where you are today? Yeah, it, it feels like a long journey. I still see myself pretty early in my career. But for me, growing up, it was very much go to school, get good grades, get into a good university, get good grades again, get into a good job. And from there, get a good job and continue to grow, 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 grow. And I went through those motions. I, I studied in Vancouver at UBC. I went to business school and right away going into that environment at such a young age, 18, 19 years old, you get sucked into this pressure of high performance, of taking action, of getting into the best company. And of course, that's what I fell into. So um, in those moments, I was very, oriented toward education and oriented toward uh, progressing in my career and throughout my career um, or throughout my education I studied accounting and real estate actually I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do and I had an opportunity to work for one of the big four firms uh, KPMG to join in their audit department and I studied accounting in high school in grade 11 and grade 12 and what I really liked about accounting was we got to sit in the computer lab and be on the computer during the entire class. And uh, we used MacBooks at the time, we're not MacBooks, um, the Mac computers, the ones with the like that bubble background. And I loved it. I mean, we were playing in Excel. I never used Excel before that. And I was like, I'd rather do this than write an English essay. And we actually got to play Monopoly during, during um, our final project and book all the journal entries, collecting rent, paying your fines. And it was in grade 11 and grade 12 where I learned the basics of accounting. And during that time, I was actually fortunate to go into this work placement program uh, in high school in between my grade 11 and grade 12 year. And I worked in a real estate office in their accounting office in the back office. And what was I doing? I was looking at account payable reports. I was looking at cash receipts and just to be in this corporate environment. And I, I learned that, hmm, I could actually build a career in this. And of course, I was doing a lot of paper shredding at the time. But as I went into university, I, I went into my accounting classes with a bit of an edge, right? A bit of an edge because I've taken a few years of accounting. And I like math. Growing up, I was very numerical. I liked counting cars. And I thought, well, this could be a good career path for me. And there's a solid foundation of alumni and senior students that have gone down this path to join the big four in accounting toward more education, at least here in Canada, getting a CPA. So I went through those motions and by the time I graduated, honestly, I was not sure if that was the right path for me. I was thinking, is it real estate? Is it accounting? Is it traveling the world? Is it starting a business? But I needed to make a decision and at that point I already had a few internships working in the accounting space that it felt very natural to join the big four and get further education in accounting. But I, I had this voice at the back of my head saying, get this education and then start a business or join a startup, a tech company, something that will um, be not exactly accounting work, but I could use the foundations of, uh, of finance and accounting to build on to my skill set of being a business person. So that, that was the early stages of my career development. And as I started to join um, the professional workforce, it was actually quite different than what I expected. I mean, I was studying at the same time and had a lot of motivation to study and work at the same time. Um, but what became very challenging was actually a, a, 
a personal loss. My cousin, um, during the very early stages of my career, uh, we found that he overdosed and didn't make it. This was a total surprise. I, I didn't realize that he was struggling. And I didn't realize that, um, you know, he needed help. And meanwhile, I was working in accounting. You have very, very busy periods in the winter. I, I buried that. I buried that loss and, and, and the grief in, oh, well, I'll just focus on my work. And work started to feel like something different. It started to feel like this thing that I had to go to, um, of course, to get paid and get my education. But I felt like the impact that I was making at work wasn't wasn't giving me the meaning and the fulfillment that I was looking for. Because what I was more concerned about at the time was, what is addiction? What is depression? What is anxiety? What is stress management? What is mental health? And I, I went down this, this journey of my own to start to consider my own mental well-being. And in those moments, I was starting to ask myself, why am I doing accounting? I want to be be serving people. I want to be doing work that energizes me. And though I was good at accounting and I had the skill set, I found that going to work started to become um, more, how I would describe, routine and repetitive and mundane. And it wasn't until about a year later where I actually seeked therapy. And that's when everything changed. I, I went to this therapist um, I still work with. She's also a life coach. And she said to me at the very beginning, you know, what do you want to focus on? I said, I want to figure out what I'm doing with my career. And after that one hour session, it was more like, wow, I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to describe my feelings. I don't know how to process grief. And it wasn't the first time I experienced loss. I've had loss of other friends and family members in the past in which I buried I buried because I was focused on my studies. I was focused on getting the good grades. I was focused, focused on getting the job. A year later, the pandemic happened. At that point, I was I was very focused instead of just on my career, but I was focused on myself. I was focused on my, my mental well-being. I was focused on my health. I was focused on my motivation. And when the pandemic happened, everything that I liked about my job, which is connecting with people, meeting with my clients, being able to teach and give presentations and build community got taken away in, a, in an instant. And I remember sitting in the basement at home working on my computer. I was actually using a 42 inch TV as my monitor because I didn't have a good setup. I was like, is this really it? Is this what I signed up for? I mean, I, I put seven years into this industry as a professional accountant. I, I joined boards. I volunteered, I did all this stuff. I was so driven, but I realized I wasn't happy. I realized I wasn't happy doing what I was doing and I needed to make a change for myself. And at that point, I revisited that initial intention of why was it that I wanted to get more education in accounting. It was, I wanted to help people. I wanted to be able to offer value to others, maybe start a business. But I started visiting those questions again. Now that I've finished and gained a few years of experience in this field, I think I should have enough clarity now. So I, I continue to dive deep into those questions and start getting ideas about business development. And um, th the biggest impact for me was actually thinking back of that conversation with my coach, my therapist, and realizing career development is actually supposed to suff or complement and add to our personal development. And for so long of my, my upbringing in my life, I was so focused on achievements and the next steps that I wasn't giving myself that space to ask myself, Casey, what is it that I want to focus on? Not what my teachers or my parents or my peers expect out of me, but what is it that I need for myself? And at that point, I, I took a few weeks off during the pandemic. This is after working for like six months from home. I took some time off to spend with my family. We got away from the city. And it was in that moment where it became so clear that this job was making me feel unhappy and stuck. 
that I needed to make a change for myself. And at that time as well, I already started considering coaching as a career. At first I was thinking about teaching or mentoring or being a business advisor, but when I really got to the core of it, I wanted to help people feel empowered. So I got, yeah, I got back to my job and I sat there, same room, same desk, same TV as my monitor, Monday morning, I just knew this isn't for me. And that same week I decided to give my notice and I, I left my job. Yeah. And this was during a time where people were getting laid off. In fact, half of my family members got laid off from their jobs and they were, they were on government benefits trying to figure out. And it sounded absurd. Like, Casey, why are you leaving your job during this pandemic? There's so much uncertainty. And I remember my mom saying, like, don't do this. Like, why are you doing this? Like, I'm not happy. Why, why would, I, would I continue to do this? I have a plan. I'll, I'll go back to school part time. I'll figure out how to build a coaching business from scratch. And at, the, at that point as well, I, I worked with a few clients on the side for free. So you weren't and necessarily fully green into this. You were kind of experimenting no. on the side while you were at your nine to five. Yeah. And and the questions I would ask my clients, and I'd go on YouTube and go online and see, you know, what do coaches do? I'd ask, how can I help? You know, what are you struggling with? How could I help? And I, I actually worked with a few of my um, teammates on the side on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday mornings at nine o'clock. <laughs> We'd get up, go on Zoom, and have a conversation. But at that point, when I decided to leave my job, it was really a, a refocus of energy toward doing something that I thought that I needed to do for myself, which was develop my skill set, be able to help people meaningfully, and combine my skills in business to leverage uh, my experience to actually build something for myself. And this dream of mine I thought of for years. I was like, yes, I'm, I'm gonna do it. And what happened was I gave my notice and it's two weeks. I got a call back from management saying, Casey, we know you're departing, but there's a role available for you where you could coach, train and develop all of our junior staff and the job is yours if you want it. I was like, oh, dang, like, I, I don't know what to say. Like I've made up my mind. And when I learned more about the opportunity, which was to help coach, develop, train and support all of our junior staff that were joining during the pandemic. Fully remote, coming out of university without even having a graduation. I said, game on, let's do this. And in that moment, I felt very empowered because I already made a decision for myself to leave my, my job. I, I had this mindset, this entrepreneurial mindset of, well, I'm gonna put on this contract or entrepreneurial hat and spend a year here and treat this role as my first corporate client. So I brought in um, a different way of working for myself. Like I didn't adhere to this nine to five. I worked when I needed to work. I, I studied when I needed to study. I, I worked with my private clients when I needed to work with my private clients and designed this role to work for me and be able to serve and support the, the organization. And that was like the dream job. I loved it. It was amazing. But still that feeling of wanting to personally grow and develop. I mentioned earlier, one of the thoughts was, well, can I travel? Can I see the world? Because I, I know from my experience as a student, I, I got to travel um, through exchange and through different business competitions. That's when I felt like I grew the most. And of course I couldn't travel, it was a pandemic. But after doing that for a year in 2021, the what really excited me was to be able to travel and build a business at the same time. I was like, how am I gonna do that? And I was working with another one of my coaches at the time and it became obvious like how I'm going to do it is by doing it. I could talk about it all I want. And honestly, at the time, I thought I was gonna do what I was thinking of doing at the age of like 35, 10 years later. Right. But when I started to ask myself a question, what's holding me back? It was really myself and my own fears of not being good enough, not having enough experience, and not knowing how to market. And instead I flipped that switch and said, well, if I wanna build a business, I need to learn those skills. I need to learn those skills 
So I, I set out for, for the last year actually, building a coaching business that specifically focuses on helping accounting and finance professionals find clarity in their careers. And it's everything from building confidence, getting direction in their life, learning how to set boundaries with their employers, communicate, and for some, start their own businesses. For others, get a promotion, move into a new line of work, um, improve their relationships. It ends up being uh, very much me being their support in all aspects of their lives with a career orientation to it. And like I said, my belief of career development is that we develop our careers to create the lifestyle that we want for ourselves. And through all these experiences, I realized that coaching, being a coach and also being an entrepreneur and being a learner, all of us put together, like this is what's helping me grow personally as an individual. And I learned that it was so hard to make that switch from making decisions from society's expectations, which is very subconscious. I mean, depending on where you're from, it'll really, um, come from early childhood all the way through to where you are today, right? Media, social influence, to stopping and pausing and realizing that you can't avoid the, the struggles and the hardship of not knowing what you want. I mean, I think we all have the ability to stop and pause and ask ourselves these questions. And I found that working with coaches or mentors or teachers or close friends or family members are how we could really start to articulate our visions, especially as entrepreneurs, we have big visions and ideas and you're going to come across people that will say, no, like, what are you thinking? I mean, that's what my mom said. What, what are you thinking? Leaving your, your job and your steady income to start a business. And it wasn't until a year later where she said, well, I see why you, why you chose that decision. Right? You're so much happier You're You're doing what you want to do. And for, for all of you that are running businesses or thinking about it or have been in business for a long time. Like, it takes a lot of effort, but the amount of personal growth that comes from the effort, the consistency, the failures, falling down and learning and pivoting, it, it's truly priceless. So I, I know I shared a lot there about my journey. I'm, yeah, I'm wondering if you have any questions. I know we're in I think for 17 my, minutes For here. myself, what's really interesting was that, you know, you made that flip in your mindset really early on while you're working your nine to five, you know, this wasn't working for me. Um, there's gotta be something more. And what I believe is that your entrepreneurship journeys maybe started in that secondary position where you're training your younger colleagues. Um, yeah. What do you say to all those kinds of experience? I know looking back, you know, they all kind of fit in, but at the time, you know, it just seems like a distraction from your entrepreneurship mm -hmm. journey or building your business? Mm. Yeah, really good question. I mean, all those steps that I've taken, I would say over the last four years after my cousin passed away and when I started to really ask myself the soul searching questions, called it my quarter life crisis, was coming from a place of purpose and intention. And for me personally, what I connected with best was I wanna be the best that I can be so that I can serve others. And I was not at my best if I'm showing up unmotivated, tired, exhausted, um, avoidant in, in my own emotions and my own feelings. How could I serve others when I myself am not taking care of myself? And throughout those, those steps, it wasn't that I needed to be a coach. It's not that I needed to travel um, and be able to create a, a work environment that works for me. It wasn't that I needed to be an accountant. I think all of that stuff on the surface, the, the doing of life, right? the achievements that I followed and that many of you might be looking to pursue as well, wasn't about everything that I was doing, but it was more so about how I was feeling, how I was being. I mean, we're human beings for a reason, we're not human doings. And as we're human beings, we could stop and pause and ask ourselves, like, how am I today? And, and what could I do right now to feel more empowered? And for me, it was taking those steps and those calculated and uncalculated risks to trust that my intentions are pure, to trust that whatever happens with 
my business, with the pandemic, with this recession, that I know how to take care of myself and that I could take care of those around me. And it goes right back to the core of when I lost my cousin. I, I don't want to be in another situation where I know that I could help someone overcome a challenging time in their lives. And for me, I found that, at least for now, through coaching. But it could come in all different forms later in life as a father, as a community member, as a teacher, as a friend. Yeah, that's a very holistic approach to, you know, your business and kind of existing. You know, I think as entrepreneurs, we wear so many hats. Um, we're the finance guy, we're the sales guy, we're the marketing mm -hmm. guy. We're all these things at once. And I think I really like that approach that, you know, you're rolling with the punches. I mean, look at you right now. For those who don't know, where are you right now? I'm in Costa Rica. Yeah, I've been traveling here for the last five weeks with my fiance, and we're gonna be traveling for the next several months. And we're able to do this. Um, we have the privilege to do this. Um, and be in alignment still with the value that we're offering um, at least for me, for my clients. And we have the flexibility to experience um, life in the way that we want to live life. And yeah, at times I, I feel like, is it is it greedy? Is it selfish for us to step away from home? And it wasn't until after being stuck at home for three years that, it, that we realized that the world is big. There's no scarcity of opportunities. And that's the mindset that I held before. There's actually an abundance of abundance of opportunities out there, whether that's building business or traveling and meeting people or developing yourself spiritually and internally. So th yeah, th there's so much learning once we start to open our mind outside of the, the boxes that society might have put us into, that there's actually much more that we can explore with our own potential. And honestly, you won't really know until you try it. Yeah, well, I want to give you credit because, you know, from the journey that you just described all the way to this point, I think you've manifested your position to travel and work and have your own business at the same time. So I want to give you credit there because that's not an easy thing to do um, as a small business owner and just as a, you know, entrepreneur itself. Um, I do want to give you the chance to plug your business. Um, where can people find you? Where can we find your websites? How can we support you? Yeah, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Best way to find me is look up my name, Casey Chung, caseychung.com. I have a website that you could see more about my services, what I have to offer. But more importantly, if anything in my story today resonated with you, when you relate or you have questions, let's have a conversation. I'm always happy to open up my calendar. You could you could find my contact information on my website and I'm really interested to hear what your entrepreneurial journey is, what you might have questions about, life-related, career-related, business-related, finance-related. I'm an open book and I love connecting with people. So I'd say the best way for you to leverage the opportunity from this conversation here is if you want to learn more, let's connect. Awesome. Thanks so much, Casey. Really appreciate having you and your time.